Okay, so before I show this video, I want to ask you guys what you know about heaven so far. Um, thinking of heaven, what do you think about? What do you know? What's it going to be like? Give me some thoughts. And then we're going to show this video. I can write them down too. I'll just go down the line unless anybody wants to volunteer. Because I would love to know. Anybody? It says there's going to be streets of gold. Streets of gold. All right. Streets of gold. We're going to test this with scripture. All right, because that's what we think about. Streets of gold. Is it going to be like a street like that? Freeways? I don't know. <laughs> traffic? Streets of gold. So many streets, no traffic. No, GPS is to get around. Uh, anybody else? When you think of heaven, what do you what do you think about? Milk and honey. Milk and honey? That was a promise line. Okay, whatever. I don't know, that's why I was That's saying. heaven, milk and honey. <laughs> Sounds good. As long as there's milk and cookies, I'm good. I'm good. Because there's food there. <laughs> milk. Honey. Okay. Anybody else? Lulia, what do you think of heaven? What do you think? White clouds. White clouds. Yep. Clouds. Clouds. So we like you eat we all <laughs> we all get our own cloud with a little steering wheel. Yes. We all fly around. <laughs> so well, what did you say? White clouds? Yeah. White clouds. Okay. Uh, Josh? Crystal Oceans. Crystal Oceans. That's a terrible ocean. Crystal. <laughs> we're going to read a verse. Can I get over? Well, we're going to <laughs> No wait for it. No fishing. I wonder. Can you fish on there? All right, just I, David, any thoughts? Ariana, thoughts? Heaven? Animals? Do you think there's going to be animals? Oh, yeah, probably. You do? Yeah. Snakes. No. Oh, yeah. No snakes, though? <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. Yeah? No, do you, th you think there's food in heaven, Ariane? <laughs> I don't know. No. Stop. <laughs> I don't think so. No food. All right, so let's, right now, no food and no snakes. No, or maybe snakes. <laughs> let's say yes on animals. No chickens, though. Definitely <laughs> not roosters waking us up. All right, so that's what we think about when we think of heaven. So we think about clouds. Everybody, everybody think about clouds? Like, what about harps? <laughs> yes, the presence of God. Presence of God? Okay, God's hey, presence. I know, but what about everybody? <laughs> All right, let me ask you right now, is this something you're looking forward to? I mean, really, does that look appealing? Not no food. All right, we have milk and honey. <laughs> we have milk and honey here. We do not have streets of gold, but I could really care less about the streets. White clouds, I don't know. I just picture fog, but like white fog. White fog, okay. <laughs> Crystal oceans, that's cool. I mean. Crystal clear. Crystal lakes. Uh, no food. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I really enjoy me a good hash browns and eggs, chicken fried steak, you know, all that stuff. Animals, great. We have animals here. God's presence. I'm hoping that as we study heaven, because as I've been studying it, I've actually, it's made me a little more excited. You know, I didn't know how cool, in a way, it was. What? You know, you think about, you don't really know much about heaven, but really the Bible tells us a lot. Uh, you know, we'll never really know. The Bible says that no one can ever grasp or comprehend what God has planned for those who love Him. You know, for His people, you can't imagine what He's designed for us. You know, you try to stretch your mind as far as it can go, not even close. So, you know, we can get a glimpse but it's not, you know, that's what the Bible says at least. And I, I just, I've been, as I've been studying it, learning or understanding that it's God, He wants us to have a hope for it. Not just because He said so, because it's going to be amazing. Um, and we're going to get into that. It's going to take a few weeks to get there, but 
Today we're going to talk about um, some uh, misunderstandings of heaven. But first I want you to watch a video. Alright. And this is my old homeboy friend on YouTube. There have been all these books over the past few years about people who went to heaven and then came back to tell us all about it. Uh, books by Dr. Eben Alexander or by Colton Burpo. And in one other case recently, the kid even admitted that he made it all up. Still, if you're religious, you probably think heaven is this great place. You are living your life so that God will let you through the pearly gates. But the problem is, when you think about it, heaven's actually a pretty horrible place to be. Now, it's kind of like New York City for me. Like, I'd love to visit it, but I don't think I'd want to live there forever. Here's why. Playing a harp doesn't sound like fun even now. I can only listen to Joanna Newsom for so long. Seeing your loved ones is great and all, but when I visit my parents or relatives in other states, I'm usually ready to leave within a day or two. Given the type of people who tend to talk about heaven all the time, I'm pretty sure the lack of intellectual stimulation would get frustrating after a while. It seems like all you ever do in heaven is watch people who are still living, because they always talk about how you're looking down at them from above. And that might be okay for like a generation, but a few generations down the line, you're just staring at strangers. And that's creepy. Where are all the rebels? The artists who challenge you and maybe even offend you? The drugs, the sex, the alcohol, and all those other things that, in certain cases and in moderation, actually make life kind of worth living. If all of that's in hell, maybe we're all aiming to go to the wrong place. You know, the party is down in the basement. I just don't have any desire to be up in heaven with suicide bombers who martyred themselves to get up there. If Christians are right about unborn children automatically going to heaven, then it's going to be me and like 98% partially formed fetuses. <laughs> this is not my idea of a good time. Do I have to go to church in heaven? Do I have to worship God in heaven? Because I don't want to do either of those things now, even for like an hour. Why would I want to do them for all of eternity? Apparently, heaven is just full of toddlers, you know, who make a temporary visit to heaven before they go back down to earth and tell everyone about it. I don't think we're going to be good friends. If anyone I really loved didn't make it to heaven, I would be devastated. You know, what would it be like knowing that your parents or your kids or your spouse was burning in hell? That doesn't sound blissful to me. That sounds like torture. Part of the reason we all appreciate life is because we all go through some tough times. Sure, we take it for granted at times, but, you know, if you've ever had a runny nose, you know how good it feels when your nose is cleared up again. If you've ever survived an accident, you know how good it felt to be healthy and healed. In heaven, there's no illness or pain or injury. It's just all good all the time. And I don't know how you could appreciate that when there's really nothing to compare it to. You thought having sex in your parents' house was awkward? Just wait till God's your roommate. <laughs> the Wi-Fi connection is probably horrible. I don't think I could deal with that. Look, there's no evidence of heaven existing. You have this one life. Go enjoy it. And don't stop anyone else from doing the same. Alrighty. A little different perspective. Let's see, I was going to show you another video too, but not yet. Um, Alright, so... Is he wrong in some of his assumptions about heaven? Okay, well, he's thinking wrong playing harps. You know, which is, some, actually, you know, every time you see a movie, that's what it's portrayed. Sitting on a harp, a little bow on your head, your wings, plucking the harp, you know. And then everybody thinks that in heaven, everybody's going to be at a big church service worshiping God forever, singing. Um, you know, some of the things that he mentioned, uh, which, which are things that main, in the mainstream, uh, like Hollywood, that's kind of what heaven is portrayed as. Like, and like he said, the suicide bombers are going to be there. Um, you know, of course, that's, that's a belief with the Muslims believe that, that um, doing that gets you into heaven. And, and their heaven looks a lot different than ours. Yeah. What? Anybody know what their heaven? Some things of their heaven are. Virgins. That's right. Uh, Seventy, I believe. So that's heaven to them. 
Um, which is not so different from Heaven Now. I, I was looking on, on the internet, I just looked up Heaven, some of the songs that popped up. There's this new one that's really popular. Um, <laughs> look, watch, I'm going to show you right now. We just search Heaven. There it is, Kane Brown. 170 million views. I haven't heard the song yet, but I was supposed to listen to it. All right, so, I mean, Heaven Now is being with your girl, laying next to her, or with your, your girl with her guy. I mean, that's at least what all the songs are about. So it's maybe not that different than the Muslim belief. Um, but what does the Bible really talk about when it refers to heaven? And now we're going to open up our Bibles and find out because there we are. I'm going to show you this. In a so minute. in the Bible. Oh, not yet. All right. So we're going to look through some scriptures today because we're going to start clearing up some misconceptions about the Bible. What does the Bible teach about heaven? So I'm going to ask you to first turn with me to Isaiah chapter. Let me find it here. Isaiah chapter, oh, let's see, 50, no, 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 give me one second, let me look. Isaiah 59, two, I have a few verses, 59, two, let me see if that's the right one, if that's not it, it's 65, nope, 65, Isaiah 65, 17 through 25. There we are. All right, Isaiah 65, 17 to 25. All right, so we're going to go straight to the source. Nobody, nobody's opinion here. What does God really say heaven's going to be like? All right, and we're going to start shattering some misconceptions. Right, I need some readers, if you wouldn't mind. Isaiah 65. 65, 17, all the way to 25. Um... Let's just do one verse at a time. We'll break it down. Uh, let's start with uh, Josiah. Maybe we can just start working around. Maybe David, if you don't mind going after him. So let's hear verse 17. For well, behold, I, created new, I create new heaven and new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. All right. Okay, you guys help me out here. We're talking about heaven now. Um, at least, you know, if you read up to it, that's what he's getting to you can check it out later um, but behold I will create a new heaven and a new earth all right totally new new heaven and new earth all right let's just stop right there uh, biblically if you know revelations we're, we're gonna look at revelations too it's gonna it talks about you know the old things and then the new one comes in. A totally new heaven and a totally new earth. And it says something about the former things. What does it say? Shall not be remembered. You won't? Come into mind. Something about the former things, like maybe the former life, I, I don't know, won't even be remembered. You know, it, it's kind of like, at least when I read that verse, it's like when you encounter something so good, you forget everything else. Like it's so great. It does not compare to everything else. Um, you forget how bad it was. You had the, you know, the best thing ever. Uh, how else can you explain it? Uh, I just think of ice cream every time. You know, you have <laughs> some terrible ice cream, and you had the best one. You you just totally forget about all the other ones. Like, this is awesome. Um, so at least that's what I'm, what I'm getting from that, is that the new heaven and the new earth will cause you to forget the old. All right, and let's keep moving. So there's a new heaven and a new earth. All right, that's a big point here because we're going to be talking a lot about that. Um, did I miss anything in that verse? No. All right, David, would you mind? Uh, verse 18. But be glad and rejoice forever in what in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy and her people to be in gladness. All right, so it talks about Jerusalem. That's going to be coming up a lot. I'm just going to write it right here. Jerusalem. This is our first day, so some of this isn't going to make a whole lot of sense, but as we go, it will. Jerusalem. Um, would you mind helping us out, Ariane? Verse 19. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more, no more shall be heard in it. 
is the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. All right, so like this atheist gentleman said, there's no crying in there, there's no pain. What is the Bible? Is that true in the Bible? It says no weeping. What does it say? Distress? Cry of distress. No weeping, no crying. Yep. No, no crying. All right? No weeping and no crying. Never cry again. You know, I know men doesn't don't cry, so I mean, for the girls at least. They'll never cry. Yeah, Isn't that? Cry. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, just think of that. You know, maybe you fall and what? You don't get hurt? Maybe. You never, never fall. fall. You're on hover shoes. I don't know. So, I mean, those are just, just things to think about. Um, but no crying. I, I think the idea is that there's no there's no pain. There's no more sorrow. You don't experience loss. No one's gonna hurt you there. You're not gonna get um, offended. You're not gonna get beaten. You're not gonna. You know, no one's ever gonna harm you again. No broken hearts. Nothing. You're gonna be totally joyful. You'll be happy. You know, forever. Um, what does that look like? You know, we're gonna learn more about it. But no weeping. No crying. All right, so that's pretty big. Um, and let's keep moving. Uh, verse 20. Uh, guys in the back. 20 says, uh, <clears throat> No more shall there be <clears throat> any uh, fear who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner... A hundred years old shall be accused. All right. So this this one was a little. Um, hmm. What? How can I say it? It it. I think at first glance it look it looks a little odd because it says no longer will babies die when only a few days old. No longer will adults die before they have lived a full life. No longer will people people be considered old at 100. Only the cursed will die that young. So it, it's talking about death, but in heaven there, you know, when the new earth, new heaven and new earth come, no no more death. It's been conquered. Death will not ever happen again. Uh, at least that you know we're going to read about that in the Bible. But it it's when I first read it, it sounded like wait a minute. So we're you mean we're only going to live 100 up there, and then we're, that's it? But I I don't think that's the idea, it's more about, you know, you're, you're going to, the, the length of it, there's not going to be any reason for you to die young. And nobody's going to die young. There's not going to be anything like that occurring. Um, Madi, you had some? I think it's referencing life on earth right now. Yeah. It, Instead of life there. I think it's referencing what we're living now. We will not see that there. If something we can Something's understand. Something's here. Yeah. Only the cursed will die that young. That was a part. Um, so, you, you're right. It's talking about now, relating it to now. It wouldn't make sense for death to exist exactly. once you're there. Right, right, exactly. So that was the only verse that was just threw it off a little bit. So let's keep moving. We can go back to that if you guys have some questions later. Um, uh, Josh? Um, 21. They shall build houses, inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. All right. Now, let me ask you this. Is that talking about future or right now? Or is it talking about a time that already passed? Or is that happening in heaven? Build houses, plant your own vineyards. What do you guys think? Well, Jesus says he goes and is building a house for us. Mm -hmm. Mansions. A mansion. So, so in the, think about the context of what we're reading about. Verse 17. Look, I'm creating a new heavens and a new earth. No one will even think about the old ones anymore. Be glad and rejoice over my forever in my creation. And look, I'll create Jerusalem as a place of happiness and her people will be a source of joy. Um, you know, it's going on, all these things. Uh, and it, I, so what I'm 
just think about the context. Is he jumping back and forth between heaven and right now, and heaven right now, or is it all heaven? And that's that's the part to where it seems like in reading it, it's all heaven. Uh, that he's not jumping back and forth. He's making metaphors. Uh, so uh, again, we're gonna we'll we'll solidify this later. But just reading it now, it sounds like. People will live in the houses they build, eat fruit of their own vineyards. All right, so it sounds like we're going to have vineyards. And maybe build a house. It, that's what it's sounding like. Um, but let's keep moving. Uh, 22, Hannah. Um, they shall not build, and another inhabit the house of them. They shall not plant, and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Mm -hmm. All right. So no more people going to go in and conquer them and uh, take their lands and their fields and because that yeah, I mean it doesn't happen to us right now, but in the old days that's what would happen. They would get conquered. They would take their houses, take their vineyards, kick them out. Said never again will that happen. Um, and verse twenty-three. Not labor in vain nor bring forth children for trouble, for they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. Alright. Yeah, it's kinda of going on with the top one. Um and let's read the last two. So is that saying that there's gonna be reproduction? That's a touchy one. As far as I know, what the Bible says is no. As far as I know, but again, there's some, there's a little bit of controversy. Um, there's a scripture that Jesus mentions, which we're going to read, uh, not today, but later. It says because uh, they pose a question. They said, "Okay, say this guy had a wife. He died. The brother marries her. He died too. The other brother. It happened seven times. All seven brothers marry this girl." When you get to heaven, whose wife is she? And then Jesus says, look, in heaven you're not going to be given. Be, there's no marriage. You're not going to be giving each other in marriage. Uh, in heaven. Um, so, that's all we're working with right there, is that, that verse. And so, it sounds like you won't be. I mean, there's not going to be a marriage. The whole point of marriage is to to show the relationship between God and His people. That's the whole point of the institution of marriage, is to show His commitment to people, and that we can have that with one another, because that's God's commitment. With his, he's, he's married the church. He's married us. And when, we, when that's all completed, we don't really need that sign anymore. So I don't know, maybe it'll be something better. But we're, again, we're going to touch on that a little bit later about the intimacy, you know, that you're going to feel in heaven. Um, but that's a good question. Like, will there be kids? Will you? I would love to have a wife in heaven. Yeah, I, I hope so. You know, but, uh, you know, like I said, the Muslims believe they're going to have 70. Um, but I, it all has to do with, there's a lot that has to go into this because you have a new body. Will it, will it, you know, have those same craves? Um that the old body does that we do, you know, we'll, you know. So, we're again, we're gonna we're gonna talk about a lot of that, but today is we're just gonna clear up some of them. But absolutely, we're gonna talk about that. Um, Twenty four. Can you read that one? Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Okay. So God saying, before you call, I'll answer. Before you're even done speaking, I already I'm gonna hear it. So that's that's the relationship that he's portraying in heaven that you're gonna have is that you know the closeness is that you know you're gonna know he's he's gonna know and not that he doesn't know now but I think it just the the interaction will be um, I mean he's gonna be right there. So I'll read the last verse: the wolf and the lamb will feed together, the lion will eat hay like a cow, but the snakes will eat dust. In those days no one will be hurt or destroyed on my holy mountain, I the Lord have spoken. So there is snakes. 
dust eaters. All right. Um, <clears throat> so this is a verse in Isaiah. He he was one of the few people who had a vision that God showed him. You know, a vision of what it's going to be like, and he's saying that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and he describes it a little. People are going to live long lives. Children aren't going to die anymore. There's no pain. There's no crying. Um, the wolf and the lamb will feed together. As you know, that that doesn't really... Wolves eat lambs. So, But they're going to be eat, lying together. They're going to be eating hay and straw together. Um, and uh, the snakes will eat the dust. That part's a little... Uh, little con something to think about because that was a curse in the beginning when uh, it, it said that you, no longer are you going to crawl on your hands in Genesis but the curse was you will crawl on your stomach and you'll eat dust so whether that's still going to be in heaven sounds like it sounds like they're going to be vegetarian vegetarians that's right <laughs> uh, on another video from this guy he said okay let me think about this on the atheist guy it was pretty funny eh? he said okay Animals die, they go to heaven just to be killed again, to be eaten <laughs> by people. And they say, that don't make any sense. Well, that's a good point, you know. Um, so, will you be eating meat in heaven? It sounds like the animals won't be. They're going to be eating straw. Um, so, because there's no more death. So, if we had food, probably not hamburgers. So... Again, you know, there's there's a there's more we'll discuss. There's a guy I'm gonna show a video of the next time that he's he's the expert on this. His name is Randy Alcorn, uh, and he's I'm, I'm getting a lot of info from him, and he he'll break it down pretty cool. Um, so that's the first one. Is that the big thing? Is that <clears throat> well? Let's jump over to Revelations, and I'm just gonna touch on it a little bit. The big thing is this. Okay, this is the big thing we're focusing on today. Will we, when we die, will we spend at least what the Bible teaches? Will you go up to heaven and spend eternity there? What does this new heaven and new earth, what does that mean? I think heaven comes down to earth. Jesus reclaiming what is rightfully his, which is earth. Right. Because that seems like that's the big confusion when we talk about heaven is that we believe we go up into the clouds and we're there. But that actually isn't what the Bible teaches. Is that heaven comes to us. And heaven is a new earth. Crazy. A better one. More features. I don't know. But it's an earth. But it's, you know, it talks about earth. So obviously there's some similarities. Um, let's read this last one in Revelations 21. And I just want to show you a short video. Revelations 21, let's read 1 to 4. And then we're going to pick it up on verse 9. Alright, so again, the new Jerusalem. The new earth. And let's take a few more verses this time. Uh, anybody want to read a few? Thanks, Josiah. You can read 1 to 4. <laughs> then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from, those, from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with him, and they will be his people. Uh, you do the and next God one. Himself Verse will be four. with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eye, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, for the former things have passed away. Alright, okay, so this one's full, loaded with stuff. Let's start from the first one. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The old one had passed away. All right, so the new heaven and new earth. So is it, the Bible is not talking about then all the people went up to the sky and stayed there forever. It says a new heaven and a new earth. So the crazy thing is it's like new heaven. The 
the skies are going to be new. And, and we'll discuss this later, but just like we are dying, and so is the earth. You know, if you look at, um, so is creation. If you look at, I forget what it's called, but the earth is, um, I should have probably looked that up, but the earth is expanding. So uh, the Big Bang, you know, you heard of that. Um, that, that the point of that is that there was a starting point and everything came from that. So right now the, the, the universe is expanding. It's growing out and there's energy in it and it's running out. So it's not this unlimited source of energy. It also itself is slowly dying just like us. And so that's the, there's a new heaven. Everything's going to be renewed. Why? We'll talk about that later, but. There's, and there's a new heaven and a new earth, and the sea was gone. So Josh talked about a sea that's crystal clear. All right, it, I think it does talk about a sea later, but it, right now it says it's gone. Um, so like salt water, I don't know. So just keep that in mind. So then there goes the sea animals. Our ecosystem is going to be different. Keep, oh, yeah, well. Again, it talks about the <laughs> clear crystal. We'll see what that is. And I saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. All right, so just imagine this, Julia, all decked out in white, with her hair done, coming down the stairs from the sky, boom, 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 coming out. You know, everybody's, oh, wow. So, you know, that's the picture is that I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. And it says, like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. All right, so the new Jerusalem, the holy city coming out of heaven, which God has created, this new earth, like a bride dressed for her husband. And, you know, God made it for him. You know, for him. We're, and it, what he talks about is that we are the bride. Uh, uh, you know, you'll see that through Revelations, that we're the bride. But uh, it's, it's wrapped up, ready to be presented. Beautiful at its peak. And I heard a shout saying, God, God's home is now among His people. He will live with them and they will be His people. God Himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death, sorrow, crying, pain. All these things are gone forever. What's one thing out of this verse that's going to be really different? No pain. No pain. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Anything God dwells with them. Yeah. That one, I mean, just think about that. God will be with them. At one time, God walked with, you know, Jesus walked the earth. God with us. But in His full glory, He'll be walking with us, you know, and never to leave again. You know, we'll be with Him. And I, I was thinking about that. I was like, man, how out of like a bazillion people, how am I ever going to get close, you know? trying to. I don't know how that's going to work. But he's going to be with us. No more, crimp, no more pain. No more crying. Um, all right. So the point today, if you're going to take anything, which I won't keep going because we're going to run out of time. I want to show you this video. Is that it's what it's talking about over and over again, and we're going to see it more and more. Is that a new heaven and a new earth? The earth we're living on now is going to be. Re, reformed, reshaped, re, redesigned, and the earth, the heavens we see now are going to be all redone, um, and God is prepping it for ever, for eternity, and He's coming down like a bride. Um, and I want to show you a video that's going to make more sense about this. It's actually, pretty cool. All right, so we'll, after the video, we'll end. I think it's like five minutes. Earth, our ways of talking about God's space and our space. So I understand our space really well. We live here, there's trees, rivers, mountains. But my understanding of God's space gets a little fuzzy. And what we do get in the Bible are images trying to help us grasp God's space, which is basically inconceivable to us. So these are two very different types of spaces. Yes, they're, they're different in their nature, but here's what's really interesting, is that in the Bible, these are not always separate spaces. So 
Think of heaven and earth as like different dimensions that can overlap in the same exact space. So we talk a lot about going to heaven after we die, but this idea of heaven and earth overlapping, we don't talk a lot about that. Which is kind of crazy, because the union of heaven and earth is what the story of the Bible is all about. How they were once fully united and then driven apart, and about how God is bringing them back together once again. So let's go back to the beginning, where heaven and earth, they're completely overlapping. Yeah, this is what uh, the Bible's description of the Garden of Eden is all about. It's a place where God and humanity dwelt together perfectly, no separation, and, and humans then partner with God in building a flourishing, beautiful world, and so on. But as humans, we wanted to do things a different way. We wanted <laughs> God out, and we wanted to create a world apart from Him. Yeah, so we have these two spaces now, and the Bible actually uses lots of different kinds of words and phrases to refer to these two spaces to make a, a clear distinction. So you've said that these spaces can overlap, though. So explain how that works. Yeah, this is where we have to start talking about temples. Because in the biblical world, you experience God's presence by going to a temple. That's where heaven and earth uh, overlap. Now, there are two types of temples described in the Bible. One is a tabernacle, basically a tent that was built by Moses. And the other was this massive building made by Solomon. And these temples were decorated with fruit trees and flowers and images of angels and all kinds of gold and jewels and so on. And these are designed to make you feel like you're going back to the garden. And at the center of the temple was a place called the Holy of Holies, which was like the hot spot of God's presence. Now we can go and be with God again. But not so fast, because the temple also creates a problem. So God's space is full of his presence and goodness and justice and beauty, but human space is full of sin and injustice and the ugliness that results. So how do these spaces overlap if they're so different and they're in conflict with each other? This was resolved through animal sacrifice. Yeah, that's kind of weird. What do animal sacrifices have to do with this? Yeah, the, the idea is this. Animal sacrifices, somehow they absorb the sin when the animal dies in your place. And it creates a clean space, so to speak, where you are now free to enter into the temple and be in God's presence. Okay, so if I'm an Israelite and I live in Jerusalem, I might be able to be in God's presence. But you said the story of the Bible is all of heaven and earth reuniting. Right, so we have to keep going in the story where we come to Jesus in the New Testament. And in the Gospel of John, we hear this claim that God became human in Jesus and made his dwelling among us. Now this word dwelling is really curious. It, literally it means he set up a tabernacle among us. And so what John is claiming right here is that Jesus is a temple. He is now the place where heaven and earth overlap. What's interesting about Jesus is that he isn't staying in this safe, clean space. He's running around hanging out with sinners. He's healing people of their sicknesses and forgiving people of their sins. He's basically creating little pockets of heaven where people can be in God's presence, but he's doing it out there in the middle of the world of sin and death. And he keeps telling everyone that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he even told his followers to pray regularly that God's kingdom come and that his will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. But a lot of people are threatened by Jesus and they kill him, which seems to spoil this whole plan to reunite heaven and earth. But we, we have to go back to a scene earlier on in Jesus' story where John the Baptist saw Jesus and said, Behold, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So Jesus isn't just talked about as being a temple, he's also talked about as being the temple sacrifice. Yeah, so, so the cross is now the place where Jesus absorbs sin to create a clean space that is not limited like animal sacrifices. Jesus' sacrifice has the power to keep spreading and spreading and reuniting more and more of heaven and earth. And this is all really great, but it leaves one big question in my mind, which is, what happens when I die? Don't I just fly over to God's space to be with Jesus? Yeah, so a few times in the New Testament we learn that Christians will be with Jesus in heaven after they die, but that is not the focus of the Bible story. The focus is on how heaven and earth are being reunited through Jesus and will be completely brought together one day 
when he returns. So in the book of Revelation, we get this beautiful image of the Garden of Eden, now in the form of a city, coming to end the age of sin and death by redeeming all of human history in a renewed creation. And God's space and human space completely overlap once again. All right, so I'm hoping we just got a little bit cleared up today because, like I said, it's going to take a little while. But the whole point is that uh, heaven, we, we don't go to heaven. Heaven comes to us on this new earth. And like we talked about hell, hell, God's plan is not to get the hell, get us the hell out of earth. It's to get the hell out of us. Uh, which is the sin and that you know what Jesus did is that he made a way for everybody to go in and the sad thing is that few people go that road um, you know this this big thing this new earth new heaven that God's creating for his people or for people who trust in Jesus so uh, not that you know everybody that goes deserves it it's just they believe so that's the start. We got a lot more. We're going to talk about some crazy topics, marriage, and all those other things in heaven. But there's a lot, a lot of stuff that's pretty cool. So let's end today. That's just kind of getting us started. Um, let's pray.